Hello everyone, and welcome back to another awesome lesson. Today, we're taking an exciting journey through the circulatory system, one of the most important systems that keeps our bodies alive and healthy. We'll explore the purpose of the circulatory system, the amazing components that make it work, like the heart, blood vessels, and blood, and we'll also look at some common health issues that can affect this vital system. Here's a big question for you to think about. Why do you think the circulatory system is often called the transport system of the body? Let us know what you think in the comments. And don't forget, there's a fun quiz at the end to test your brain power. If you're loving these lessons, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on our weekly content. Alright, let's jump in and discover how the circulatory system works to keep every part of our body alive and well. The circulatory system is a vital system in the human body that transports important substances like oxygen and nutrients to all the cells, tissues, and organs. It is made up of the heart, blood, and blood vessels, which work together to keep everything running smoothly. The heart pumps oxygen-rich blood through the arteries to the body's cells, where it delivers oxygen and nutrients needed for energy and growth. At the same time, the system collects waste products like carbon dioxide from the cells and carries them through the veins back to the heart and lungs to be removed from the body. This constant movement of blood helps keep the body healthy and balanced. The main processes of the circulatory system involve two key types of blood circulation, pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. In pulmonary circulation, the heart pumps blood to the lungs, where it picks up oxygen and releases carbon dioxide. This oxygen-rich blood then returns to the heart. In systemic circulation, the heart pumps this oxygenated blood to the rest of the body through a network of arteries. As the blood moves through the body, it delivers oxygen and nutrients to the cells and collects waste products like carbon dioxide. The now deoxygenated blood returns to the heart through the veins, and the cycle starts again. This continuous process keeps all the body's cells nourished and helps remove harmful waste. The circulatory system consists of the heart, blood vessels, veins, arteries, capillaries, and blood. The human heart is a strong, muscular organ located in the chest, just above the diaphragm and between the lungs, slightly tilted to the left side. It acts as a pump that keeps blood moving throughout the body. The heart is hollow and divided into two separate sides, left and right, by a thick muscular wall. Each side of the heart has two chambers, the upper chambers are called atria, singular, atrium, and the lower chambers are called ventricles. The atria receive blood from veins entering the heart, while the ventricles pump blood out of the heart into arteries. The left ventricle has a thicker muscular wall because it needs to pump blood at high pressure to the entire body, except the lungs. In contrast, the right ventricle has a thinner wall as it only pumps blood to the nearby lungs at lower pressure. The heart also contains one-way valves between its chambers, which make sure that blood flows in the correct direction and doesn't go backward. These features work together to keep the circulatory system running smoothly. Pause the video and see if you can identify the different parts of the heart in the diagram. Let us now discuss the circulation of blood through the body. The circulation of blood through the body is a continuous process that ensures every cell receives oxygen and nutrients, while also removing waste products like carbon dioxide. This process is known as double circulation, because the blood passes through the heart twice during one full circuit, once to go to the lungs and once to go to the rest of the body. It begins when deoxygenated blood, blood that has given away its oxygen to the cells and collected waste like carbon dioxide, returns to the heart from the body through large veins, entering the right atrium. When the right atrium contracts, it pushes the blood into the right ventricle. 
the right ventricle then contracts and pumps the blood through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. In the lungs, a gas exchange takes place, carbon dioxide is released from the blood and exhaled, while oxygen from the air we breathe is absorbed into the blood. This oxygen-rich or oxygenated blood then travels back to the heart, entering the left atrium through the pulmonary veins. When the left atrium contracts, it pushes the blood into the left ventricle, which has the thickest muscular wall because it must pump blood under high pressure to all parts of the body. The left ventricle contracts forcefully, sending the oxygenated blood through the aorta, the largest artery, and from there into smaller arteries that carry blood to every organ and tissue. As blood moves through the capillaries in the body, it delivers oxygen and nutrients to the cells and collects waste products, including carbon dioxide. The now deoxygenated blood is collected by veins, which carry it back to the heart, entering once again at the right atrium. This cycle repeats over and over, keeping the body's cells alive, nourished, and functioning. The heart, lungs, and network of blood vessels work together as part of the circulatory system to make this process happen smoothly and continuously. We have seen that the heart is part of the circulatory system. Blood vessels are also part of the circulatory system. Let us now look at blood vessels in more detail. What are blood vessels? Blood vessels are tubes that carry blood throughout the body. They form a network that allows the heart to send oxygen-rich blood to every part of the body and return oxygen-poor blood back to the heart. There are three main types of blood vessels, arteries, capillaries, and veins. Each type has a different structure and plays a unique role in the circulatory system. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Arteries are blood vessels that transport oxygenated blood away from the heart to the organs and tissues. The only exception is the pulmonary artery, which carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. Because arteries carry blood at high pressure, they have thick, muscular, and elastic walls. These strong walls help arteries withstand the powerful force of blood pumped directly from the heart. Capillaries are the site of exchange. As arteries travel through the body, they become smaller and eventually branch into capillaries, the smallest and thinnest blood vessels. Capillaries form a network of fine tubes within organs and tissues, connecting arteries to veins. Their walls are only one cell thick, which allow substances to pass easily between the blood and body cells. The walls of capillary vessels are very thin, therefore cells get into close contact with the blood. Capillaries are where the exchange of gases, nutrients, and waste products takes place. Oxygen and nutrients move out of the blood and into the cells, while carbon dioxide and other waste products move from the cells into the blood. This makes capillaries a vital part of the circulatory system. Veins return blood to the heart. Once the exchange in the capillaries is complete, the capillaries join together to form veins, which carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart. The main exception is the pulmonary vein, which carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. Veins transport blood at much lower pressure to the heart. Their walls are thinner and less muscular than those of arteries. Veins have thinner walls than arteries and carry blood under lower pressure. To help the blood flow in the right direction, especially from the lower parts of the body, veins contain valves. These one-way valves stop the blood from flowing backward and ensure it moves steadily toward the heart. Blood is the third component of the circulatory system. What is blood? Blood is a special fluid that flows through the blood vessels and plays a vital role in transporting substances throughout the body. It carries oxygen, nutrients, hormones, and waste products to and from cells. Blood also helps in protecting the body from infections and injuries. It is made up of a liquid part called plasma, and three types of blood cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Blood plasma is the liquid part of blood and makes up more than half of the blood's volume. It is mostly water, but also contains nutrients, waste products, 
and dissolved gases such as carbon dioxide. Plasma is important because it helps transport substances around the body and keeps the blood flowing smoothly. Three types of blood cells are found in blood, namely, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Red blood cells, RBCs, are the most numerous cells in the blood. They are disc-shaped with a hollow center, giving them a biking cave shape that increases their surface area for carrying oxygen. Unlike other cells, red blood cells do not have a nucleus, which allows more space to carry oxygen. They are made in the bone marrow, and their main job is to transport oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body using a red pigment called hemoglobin, which binds with oxygen. White blood cells WBCs, are larger than red blood cells and have an irregular shape with a visible nucleus. Although they are fewer in number, they play a very important role in fighting infections. White blood cells act like soldiers, defending the body against bacteria, viruses, and other harmful invaders. Some white blood cells destroy germs by swallowing them, while others produce antibodies to attack specific diseases. Platelets are tiny fragments of cells that are also made in the bone marrow. They do not have a nucleus and are much smaller than red and white blood cells. Platelets play a key role in blood clotting. When you get a cut, platelets help form a clot, or scab, to stop bleeding and begin the healing process. Without platelets, even small injuries could cause serious blood loss. That's all for today. Before we wrap up, try to answer the following questions on your own before the answers appear. You can pause the video if you need more time to think. Next time, we'll focus on health issues of the circulatory system. Don't forget to check the link in the description for extra materials and fun activities to help you revise. And remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our weekly lessons. Thanks for watching. And until next time, keep learning and take care.